Hello, recruit, and welcome to an Astroneer Academy Extra for Course 103. I know, I know, you were expecting the second quarter of Astroneer Academy. Instead, we're suddenly back to a much earlier course and talking about resource production again. Unless, of course, you're watching these courses in order and then they appear in the playlist and you're probably wondering what in the world I'm even talking about. Before we get into today's extra, I want to revisit why these extra courses exist in the first place. If you think back to our orientation course, I introduced the idea of extras serving multiple purposes. They will typically be utilized when one main course topic has one or more relevant subtopics, but including those subtopics would result in a very long course. In those cases, we break the subtopics out into extras to help keep the runtime of each of our courses reasonable. The second reason we utilize extras is that there will be occasions where we need to return to a topic for further discussion. This could be due to updates in the training simulation that result in our course information becoming outdated. This could also be due to errors on our part. Or it could be something like the need for next week's extra course. There's a topic that, upon review, we discovered we omitted some useful information and want to correct that omission. Now that you know why we're returning to an earlier topic, let's get into today's fairly brief discussion. The training simulation has been updated, with a new object becoming available to produce organic, along with the appearance of several new flora. We begin today's course with that new object, the tapper. The tapper is unlocked in the research catalog for 1000 bytes and is created on your backpack printer from one aluminum. When produced, it is a small tier 1 object. You can store a tapper in any tier 1 or larger storage slot, but it will also attach to just about any other object. This means you can easily store a tapper pretty much anywhere, which can come in handy if you have limited storage space earlier in your adventure. The tapper can be placed on all previously existing hazards and harmless flora in addition to the new flora type, tappables. We'll talk more about tappables in just a few moments. When placed on any flora, the tapper will automatically turn on and begin producing organic. If you attach the tapper to an object that cannot be tapped, the light above the output spot will turn red. When the tapper is placed on an appropriate source, that light will begin to blink green. When an organic nugget is fully produced, the light will illuminate solid green and the tapper will pause production. When the output slot is cleared, the tapper will turn back on and resume producing organic. You can also toggle the tapper off and on by simply interacting with it. Once the tapper has begun producing organic, you will be unable to remove it from the flora until an organic nugget is completed or the flora to which it is attached is dug up or harvested. It can be quite easy to inadvertently pick up the completed organic nugget instead of the tapper, so if you wish to remove the tapper, be sure you toggle it off first. Additionally, you can attach more than one tapper to the same flora, though the output for the organic from the flora will be split between all tappers that are connected to that flora. That means if you attach two tappers to a flora that can produce one organic in 40 seconds, it will take 80 seconds to produce two. You will end up with the same amount of organic over the same time period, though the slower output could be less than ideal for some automation scenarios. The tapper does not require any power to operate, but it will take time to produce organic. How long it will take depends upon which flora it is attached to. Before we take a look at how long each source will take, let's first identify the new tappable flora. On Silva, you can find the plume fir in the forest region. The cactile can be found in the valley region of Calvador, while the tundra region of Glacio is home to the Pricklepod. If you venture into the rolling plains of Asanya, you should be able to locate the stretch petal. Finally, you will encounter the honeypot in the dunes region of Aatrox. While the appearance of each tappable flora is unique, they all share the same small green leaves somewhere on the flora itself. This green color stands out from its surroundings somewhat, which can make them a bit easier to find when looking for them. The plume fur will yield one organic in around 40 seconds if one tapper is attached. The cactile, prickle pod, and stretch petal will allow for the production of one organic in roughly 20 seconds, 
while the honeypot cuts that down to around 10 seconds. There are numerous hazards and harmless flora and even some occasional limited time event items that can also produce organic when a tapper is attached and they too have variable production times. Instead of detailing the exact production times for dozens of plants and LTE objects, it would be better to establish a guideline. Essentially, the more lethal a hazardous flora is, the faster it will produce organic when a tapper is attached. As an example, you can see that a pop coral has an acceptable rate, but a noxious spew flower from the mantle region of Aatrox is noticeably faster. Of course, the soil centrifuge does remain a viable means to obtain smaller quantities of organic, but may now be less than ideal for power production or larger automated production chains. Though the soil centrifuge can produce eight nuggets of organic in roughly the same time as a tapper on a honeypot would only produce four, the tapper does not require any soil or power to produce organic. This can make the tapper incredibly useful, especially early in your adventure when you may not have sufficient power to run a soil centrifuge. We will explore other use case scenarios for the tapper when we discuss automation in later courses. In addition to yielding organic via the tapper, each of the tappable flora can be harvested by simply interacting with them. When you harvest them, they will yield one or more seeds that you can replant in a location of your choosing. Once planted, the seeds quickly grow into a mature plant, allowing you to harvest them again or leave them in place. Harvesting a tappable and replanting its seed not only allows you to relocate the tappable to a location where organic production is more convenient, but will also allow you to use them as a great tool to help bring a bit of color and life to your base. Before we wrap up today, Astroneer Academy has intercepted secure communications from Exodynamics with regards to the tapper. While it was impossible to decipher the entire message, all indications point toward internal discussions of altering the tapper's organic production in some manner. This may include increased functionality or possibly reduced production rates. If there are significant changes to the tapper in the future, rest assured we will cover those in yet another Astroneer Academy Extra course. Today, we have updated our course information for obtaining the natural resource through the introduction of a new item and several new tappable flora. Next week in another Astroneer Academy 103 Extra, we will introduce additional information involving terrain hardness that was inadvertently omitted from our original discussion of the topic. Until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to keep looking to the stars.